Hey everybody, it's Austin. We have some exciting news and I got some catching up to do with you guys on what's happening with the truck. We have a lot of changes coming this week because of one addition to our family, hopefully this weekend. We might be getting a truck camper. The ones that slide into your truck bed and give you that extra living space, the bed over the cab, and a place where we can hang out when we take our uh, long road trip this summer and can use it to camp with family uh, every weekend. But the first thing we need to do, because the Tundra does not have a great payload, it doesn't increase the payload, but it gives you a little bit more stability, is add some airbags. So let me show you what we got. We have the Firestone Ride Right airbags, uh, model number 2445 for the Tundra. And we're gonna be installing this today on the truck. Hopefully it doesn't take too long because I'm tired, just got off work. But I'm excited to get these put on and allow us to level the truck out a little bit. If you guys have seen any of my previous videos, I installed a one inch rear block on the truck, which I don't think I have to take out for this kit, but I may want to. Um, currently the back driver's side is sitting at 42 inches and the right side is sitting at 41 and a quarter. So we will see, uh, back right is what I meant. We will see how that changes with the bags. And of course we can adjust that level. It shouldn't change a lot when they're not inflated. So join me in installing this and I'll give you guys some updates on how we do it throughout. All right, so we have everything out of the box and this is what it includes. We got the two airbags right here. We have the top bracket, the bottom bracket that will lay over your leaf pack like that. Air hose, the mount for the uh, valve stems. These pieces go uh, below the leaf springs so that you can um, attach the bottom bracket to it. And then we've got our hardware, hardware pack. So the first thing we're gonna do is jack up the truck, which you don't have to do, um, but it'll give me a little bit more room on the sides and I will be removing the tires. So we're gonna go ahead and get this jacked up safely and put some jack stands under it. All right, so now that we have the wheel off, the next step is to get rid of this jounce bumper, which would hit here if you bottomed out, as you can see right there. But the airbag is going to sit right on top of this. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off with our reciprocating saw. That smells something awful. Holy granoli. Uh, there might be a alignment pin under there. Because it feels hard once I get to the middle. I'm going to try to angle up a little bit. So there was an alignment pin of some sort, an alignment bump, as you can see, maybe. You can see that hump right there. And that's what that was. But we, I thought you could just take it off, but I guess you can't because you need these uh, lips of the, of the bump stop to hold your uh, leaf pack together. So I'm gonna blow this off with some air so we can continue. All right, so the next part is to remove this 12 millimeter flange nut, which is holding the 
fuel pump control module on the back side of the frame here. So you just have to do this on the driver's side. Naturally, you would drop it. Later on, we are going to mount to the frame this extension piece. It'll go behind the frame um, and attach to the control module. Let me see if I can pull that down. Actually, I think I have two, I think I have two nuts for that. Yes, I did. So, So this is the fuel pump control module right here that you can see. I don't want to let it hang by the cords, but we will attach these pieces here. Let me grab the other one. I think I might be okay to leave this out of the way just for the moment. It's hanging on by a bolt onto the frame, so we should be okay. Um, but I will say I used, um, I'll look up his YouTube channel, Nitro. He's got a sweet Tundra, um, but I'm referencing some of his video for this install along with the instructions. And he has a 2020 Tundra, which does only has one bolt for the fuel pump. So if you have... Um, a 2020 or newer, you only have one bolt for that, but I have two on my 2019. So let's continue with this install. It's going pretty well so far. We have um, taken the fuel pump control module off. It is time to put the airbag on the lower uh, support bracket. So you take your flange bolt. It's the bronze one with the flange on it with the built-in Loctite. And you put it up through here and grab one of your airbags. And it has a hole in the bottom, a threaded hole that this will screw into. There is an option for um, cradles to go on the bottom, which would support the bottom of the airbag like a bowl that it would set in and I ordered them, but they are not gonna be here till tomorrow. And I don't have any other time this week to install this kit. And I need the bags on it to go pick up the truck camper this weekend or on Friday. So kind of in a time crunch, kind of regretting not having it sooner, but I wasn't planning to get one this weekend. We just found a good deal. So we're gonna keep on with the install and maybe we'll install the cradles when they come in. So you screw this in, um, but you're not gonna torque it down at this time. So just hand tight, doesn't move. I center it would be a good idea. So that's centered. And then our next step will be to put on the top bracket, which is that plate steel. All right, so you want it to be sideways, uh, the threaded air nozzle, the threaded air nozzle and the alignment pin. You want them to be um, parallel to the frame, which will be running this way. So I believe that that is how that goes, but nothing super tight right now. So we can 
go ahead and just get everything fitted as we go. All right, so now that we have the um, airbag preliminarily installed on the brackets, we are gonna fit it in the gap here. And you will have to compress the airbag down some to get it to fit in here. And then this stem, the valve stem essentially, will go up in this hole right here, this double hole. And then these two rivets on the frame will fit into these holes right here. And once we get it um, dry fit, we will make a mark on the airbag and this bracket so that we know what the alignment is and we are able to tighten down the flare nut, flare bolt that's on the bottom of the airbag and then we'll install it a second time. I think I need to spin the airbag around. I'm gonna go ahead and lower down the axle a little bit and see if that gives us some more room to work with. Alright, so I think it's lined up a little bit better, so I'm going to jack up the axle here a little bit more. So it's in position here, but here it is not in position at all. All right, so I'm having trouble getting that lined up and keeping this pin in place up here so i'm gonna have my wife come out and jack it up as i hold it okay so i was finally able to get it in and it helped sitting on my rear so i can see the rivets in the frame um what i needed to do was flip the plate over because it will adjust the the holes back a little bit so if you're having a heck of a time um go ahead and flip that plate over and that might help you so now that we have it installed uh dry fit we're going to mark on the uh, metal and the top of the, the bracket here with a Sharpie so that we can realign it uh, and tighten down that flare bolt down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and place just a little, little line right there and there. All right, so now that we have it dry fit on the truck and I made my, my paint pen mark here with the white, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the flare bolt so that 
um, we can put it back in place. All right, so now that the paint pen marks are lined up, we tighten this down with a 9 16 ratchet. Oh, it made it twist, darn it. Let's see if there's any torque specs on this. All right, so I don't see any torque specs, but it says there is uh, torque specs in step six, but I did not see that. Torque spec on that is tight as can do it. All right, so then we put this back on top. And it is time to reinstall it under the truck. Don't forget to grab your leaf spring brackets and your four carriage bolts and their nuts. All right, so now that we have it back in place and everything's aligned, we um, get to put on through the carriage bolts with the uh, brackets that go beneath it. Make sure that everything is in place and that pin is still aligned with this top bracket. All right, so you take this piece and put it upside down here. So you hold that there and get the nuts started. In this uh, emergency brake bracket, I have tried to bend some. Um, just try to get it out of the way. So everything's still in place well. These are all lightly secured, or hand tight rather. And we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next step and I believe that's getting those tightened down. All right, now we get to tighten these up and you're going to be using a 9 16 socket to do that. And just like you do on your wheels, you wanna alternate across what you're tightening down so that it evenly clamps onto the leaf pack. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten those down and the, the torque specs on the carriage bolts are, the torque specs on the carriage bolts are 10 to 15 pounds. So a couple glug glugas will work just fine probably. But consult your owner's manual. All So I'm just getting these snug before I start alternating because they're not up to the brackets yet. All right, so before you put on the carriage bolts at the bottom of the leaf spring, like we just discussed, you need to do the um, nut at the top of the airbag so it's secured in place before you tighten it down to the leaf pack. And that's in the instructions. Um, just make sure you follow that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now, even though we mounted it to the leaf spring first.
just doing this to get them run up. And make sure your airbag is back some so that it's got the most uh, aligned uh, point of travel. I'll give these a couple more glugga glugga and then I'll get out the torque wrench and set them to 20 foot pounds. All right, I'm torquing these to 20 foot pounds. It looks like it's bending the plate. And I'm only at 20 foot pounds, so. I don't know why that's happening. As you can see, this one looks bent down. So I don't know exactly what happened there. I didn't even, it didn't even click on 20 foot pounds. So not sure why that is, but they're all tightened down. So now it's time to put the nut on the top of the air valve for the airbag. All right, so the next part takes place up behind the frame from the inside of the truck where you are attaching the nut and washer to the top of the airbag through the frame. So you wanna make sure that your rivets are still in, this, in their space and the pin is still aligned in the bracket. And then you put on your massive flat washer and the biggest nut you have that has red Loctite in it. And you'll thread that over that bolt and tighten it down to 15 to 20 foot pounds, but consult your owner's manual just to make sure. It's kind of hard to get everything up in there, but once you've done that, we're going to thread the air inlet into the top of that. All right, so the final part was getting that nozzle threaded on, and you're just gonna thread that on and then use a, a open-ended 12 millimeter wrench to tighten that down. And you just wanna make it snug. Um, and then you can adjust the nozzle angle once that is um, snugged down. And all we have left is to remount the fuel pump uh, control module with our brackets on it, I believe up to that hole up there and there. And we'll use um, hardware that they sent us to do that. Okay, so the final step is putting the fuel pump control module back into place, which you have to add these brackets using the um, OEM Toyota hardware, just the nuts that came out of these holes. And now you're going to be putting the hex bolts 
um, with the lock washer, then the flat washer through the inside coming out this way. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I think what we need to do is aim these down, even though in the picture it has the brackets pointing towards the back of the truck. We need to have them pointing down so that we raise the control module. So I'm gonna adjust those real quick. All right, so we have the fuel pump control module in and it is a pain in the butt because it's hard to reach. So I put it through and then my wife was able to put the nut on it just to hold it in place while I got the other one through. But they didn't give me enough lock washers to put um, another washer, then lock washer. So I'm going to use some Loctite on those. So you'll go putting the bolt in from the other side. You have a lock washer next to the head, then a flat washer. Then on this side, you have a flat washer, then a lock washer, or in my case, thread locker and a nut. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Hey everybody, so we got the both bags installed on both sides and now it is time to run the air hose. So you just find the middle of the air hose, hold, the, hold both ends, pull it out and find the middle. And then you're gonna wanna use a really sharp utility knife to make a perfect 90 degree cut so that when you insert these into the fittings, they um, make a good seal. So we're gonna go ahead and find the middle and we'll get it cut. So let me pull this out so it's less coiled. All right, I don't think that helped at all. We're matching up both ends. All right, so we found the middle, which is right here. So now we're gonna make a perfect 90 degree cut with a new utility knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that using my uh, my miter block, because I think that'll maybe help a little bit. See if our blade is long enough. Ah, it's not. Maybe I can grab a new blade and do it this way though. So we got a new razor blade. Cut through it like butter. You can see. Got a nice clean end, perfect cut. I'm pleased with that. All right. So now we get to run it under the truck and I'll show you guys how you run it. To start it, you just 
put it right into the nozzle and that's all you have to do. And then we'll run it along existing wiring under the truck and I'll show you where I'm gonna put the, the valve stems. So now that we're looking at our bag, I wanted to show you guys where I installed the air lines and you can see the coupler is right there. And all you have to do is shove the air hose into the coupler. You just push it straight in and tug out a little bit to make sure it's a solid connection. And then after I did that, I just ran it along the frame, tucked it up in there to follow the existing wiring, which you can see, um, you can see the air hose running there. It just runs along that loom that runs to the tailgate all above the spare tire here. You can see the spare tire. And then coming down to this existing wiring, the same wiring right there, and then zip tied it. And then my favorite part, I ran it to where it comes out, sorry. It comes out right there in the license plate right there you can see my trd valve stem covers which i'm super pumped about i think that's i think that's just the most discreet place to put it and i think it looks super cool so that's the driver's side and then the passenger side you have to be a little bit more careful um, because of the exhaust so let me show you, let me scoot over a little bit and show you how I ran that. Okay, so here's the airbag on the passenger side. And just like the driver's side, the air coupler is right above the frame. And then you can see the hose right there. And that's just running over the heat shield that um, I have for my TRD exhaust. Which if you haven't seen that video, check that out. Um, but because it goes over the heat shield, you want to put that, the shrink wrap, the heat wrap on it, which you can see is on it right there, which just protects the airline a little bit better. So I hope you can see that there. And then again, I just ran it over the frame and along this existing wiring to the back here. And I have a little bit of extra right there, um, which hasn't affected it negatively at all. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had enough. So um, I can even move it around some because I have it zip tied. And then I just ran it into the valve stem that I put into the license plate. So you just take the brass fitting, you take the nut off the front end, that's on the front end right there, you take that off and that allows you to push that through. And uh, I just drilled out the hole where the license plate screws go. And that allowed me to push the brass fitting in and then put the nut on the outside where the license plate is. And then you just take your, your hose, your airline, and just push it right into the brass fitting and it stays in. It's, it's super duper easy. And then uh, all you have to do is take off your valve stems and air it up, which we're gonna try in the next clip. All right, everybody, we have the bags installed and the hose ran from both, both bags. And now it is time to see if it works. Pray for no leaks, cause I am tired. It's 9.30 on a weeknight and I started doing this about five so it's been a long four hour process of course i've been videoing but this takes a long time longer than you'd expect so hopefully it works we're going to air it up to 70 psi and we're going to see if it airs up the truck right, here we go the 
All right, so I know I haven't showed you guys yet, but this is where I installed the valve stems for the, the airbags. And this will fit right where the license plate mounts and these little nuts will hold on the license plate. So you just gotta drill this out to the size of the valve. And uh, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and air up this side and see if we have any leaks. All right, so let's air up the driver's side. All right, that's 70. So I'm gonna go spray the fittings and hopefully we have no leaks, but it has raised the truck up a lot. Let me, uh, let me take a quick measurement of how much it's raised it up. So there's 50 pounds in this bag and it was originally 41 and a quarter. It is now 43 and a half. So dang, two, two and a quarter inches. That's crazy. Well, I'm gonna get under there and check for leaks. Here we go.